What's up, Kel Gang? All right, so we got this uh, dielectric problem here. So we have this parallel capacitor, right? Um, parallel plate capacitor, and we have all these constants. So what's happening is there's half of it is filled up with plexiglass, and the other half is just air. And so the first question is to find the capacitance of this combination, right? So let's get started, right? So what do you want to do when you have these two things, right? We have the dielectric and we have the air. We're just going to split it into two and we're going to find the capacitance of this section. Then we're going to find the capacitance of this section and we're going to take the average of them, right? So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first of all, we're going to be using the formula. Uh, well, we're going to be finding the capacitance, right? Uh, that's what we're trying to find, yes, the capacitance of this combination. So we know that capacitance, C is equal to our epsilon naught times area over distance. So this is for air, right? Let's label that air. So this is just an equation we know for the capacitance of air. So let's see, epsilon naught we know is over constant distance is given to us, and we're gonna to need to find area. So area, we have 12 centimeters on each side, so if we have a square that's 12 centimeters, we can say it's 0.12 meters times 0.12 meters. And of course, the area is going to be 0.12 squared. So that's area. So let's go C air is equal to epsilon naught times 0.12 squared over the distance, which we have to convert this to meters. So it's going to be 4.50 times 10 to the negative 30 meters. This way, it's all in correct units. So epsilon naught, um, let me put this down somewhere. Epsilon naught is equal to 8.8. 5, 4 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, so if we plug these numbers in, we're going to get the capacitance of air is equal to uh, 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11 farads. So that's a useful one that we're going to be needing. So then, how are we going to find the capacitance of the plexiglass, right? Well, we also have this other convenient thing. K, which is the dielectric constant, this is basically saying how good of a conductor or whatever is that plexiglass, is equal to the, the capacitance of what we're looking for over the capacitance that we just found. So this is going to be the capacitance of air, so let's label this plexiglass. Plexiglass, and then this is air. So we found the C of air, and then we're given our dielectric constant, which is 3.40. So if we want to find the C of plexiglass, it's just going to be K times C of air. It's equal to uh, C plexiglass. Okay, so we'll plug in our constants, or plug in our numbers, 3.40 times that of air, 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so, all right, so 3.4 times 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11 is going to be 9.63. 10 to the negative 11th farads. So what I said earlier is we're going to want to find the average of these two, right? Because we have two systems, right? If we have the system with the capacitance of this and the system with the capacitance of that, we can take the average. So we know it's 50% each. Each one's going to contribute 50%. So we can just take the average, right? So it's just going to be the C of the system is equal to the 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11th plus 9.63 times 10 to the negative 11th, just that one and that one, divided by 2, and you're going to get 6.23 times 10 to the negative 11th farads. So this is part A, right? That's your answer to part A. That's our capacitance in the system. All right, so part B is asking how much energy is stored in the capacitor. Okay, energy. So we found our capacitance for the system, so we don't really need these two numbers anymore. So if we're trying to find energy for the system, we're going to use the equation. The potential energy of the capacitor is one half times the capacitance of it times the um, potential difference across it. So we're given our potential difference is 18, and we just found the capacitance of the system. So all we have to do is plug in our numbers. So you see, it's equal to one half 6.23 times 10 to the negative 11 times our potential difference, which is 18 squared. Like this in, you're going to get 1.01 times 10 to the negative 8 joules of energy. I wrote that kind of weird, but yeah. There you go, that's B. Now, 
Part C, what is Part C asking for? If we remove the plexiglass but change nothing else, how much energy will be stored in the capacitor this time? So, let's look at that. So we're gonna use this formula again, we're using for energy again. Okay, so let's see, we have one half capacitance. So this, for part B, we use the capacitance of the whole system with the plexiglass. But if we remove the plexiglass, we're gonna use the capacitance of just the air. We found that in part A, right? Capacitance of the air we found with this equation to be 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11 farads. So then the voltage, or the, um, the potential difference is gonna stay the same, same amount. So all we have to do is plug in our new value of OHC being this number for air instead of this value for the combination. So you see is equal to one half 2.83 times 10 to the negative 11 farads, and then 18 squared again, because that's our potential difference that was given to us. And if you plug this in, you're gonna get 4.59 times 10 to the negative ninths. So you'll see you actually have more potential energy, or you'll have more energy if you have the plexiglass in there. So yeah, there you go. That's how you solve this kind of problem. Dielectrics, not too hard. Just using other formulas that we know. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.